Hey, what's up guys, Paulo Munoz here. Welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm gonna to show you how to create your own custom PBR material from textures using 3D Sampler. The idea is that you can now take any texture or photo, create a PBR material with the software uh, with a few clicks, export that material with all the settings and sliders so that you can tweak it in another software. So this is from the recent update of 3D Sampler and it's a pretty big deal. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here we are inside Substance 3D Sampler. Uh, this is just a quick test for um, kind of like a clay or plasticine material based on a photo. Uh, if I switch to Photoshop, this is the image that I used to generate that entire material. And this is just a tweaked version of this uh, full image that I got from Unsplash. I basically uh, use the levels to contrast that image and add a, you know, a few colors, a few color variation with the color balance, that sort of thing. And this is what I ended up with. And obviously I cropped it into a square uh, image, but that's exactly what I put in here, right? The rest of these layers or effects are just to tweak the material and add imperfections and, you know, a bit of roughness and the, you know, fingerprints, things like that, right? Um, there is one that is currently hidden, which is this colorize, because I wanted to show you how much this layer changes everything. So I'm going to click on this one right here. And now that I have turned this colorize, you see how uh, this, you know, changed things quite a bit. Now, you might also notice if you're familiar with uh, previous versions of Substance 3D Sampler that these new dots or these colorful dots appear in some of the layers. And this is really the, the whole point of this tutorial because this is a, a, pretty, a pretty big deal. The fact that um, these dots, it just means that it has exposed parameters, meaning that if I click on the surface relief, I will be able to select which parameters I want to keep so that when I export this material, uh, they will be available for uh, further tweaking, right? So for example, this uh, surface relief, I can change the, the intensity quite a bit, right? This is just a very subtle thing to just variate the surface. But for whatever reason, if I want to change this later on, instead of going back to 3D Sampler and tweak it from here, save it as another material and then apply it, I can save these exposed parameters so that they appear in something like um, 3D Painter or even Blender, for example, if you're using the, um, the plugin. And I'll, I'm going to show you that in a bit. So you can choose a bunch of different things to, to expose in a way, and it's super easy to do. So I'm going to show you a, a couple of examples. I just want to show you kind of like what I've done, and then we, I'm going to walk you through the process of creating uh, your own, basically. So this is one. Uh, I also have this wood material. And again, this is a um, rather complex uh, set of, of layers, but all of them um, or most of them actually have the exposed uh, parameters that I've set up um, so that when I send this to another software, I will be able to change uh, a bunch of different things, even the masking options. So for example, this one right here, the mod, if I select the mask, you'll see this one has a kind of like an open circle, uh, like a purple one. Let's go ahead and push this up. Um, I have the offset, the contrast, and the blending opacity as my exposed values. So I can just change the offset of this mod. And you see it just changes things quite a bit. So I can make it completely, you know, dirty and or wet or not just by changing this slider. So this is something that I think is game changing. The fact that you can take these sliders and send them to a, you know, a different software uh, or any other software that accepts the SBASR uh, format, right? And obviously you can change the contrast and so on and so forth. So this is what I want to show you that you can create, you know, a pretty you know, complex material, something that looks really cool, you know, set it as a template. And then when you send it to another software, you can tweak it. So um, just briefly, I want to show you bit by bit how I build this material, because again, it's very simple. It's just a matter of stacking things together. So I started with this oak uh, wood, which you can find by default uh, in the assets here. So if you open up the assets panel, if you don't see this, by the way, you can click on window and reset the default layout. Uh, but yeah, you can just type here wood. And I use this one, the oak wood. Just click, drag and drop it into this uh, viewport. And then you have uh, some presets as well. And then you can, you know, change all of these things. Now, the way that you choose which parameters are going to be exposed is simply by hovering over. And you see that this uh, kind of like pin icon appears, right? So maybe let's say the, the vein thickness, right? That one is not included. But if I want to include this, which, you know, you can clearly see what this does. Um, maybe that would be a, a parameter that I want to be able to tweak later on. I, all I have to do is just click on this, right? And now all of these ones that have a dot are going to be exposed. And if you want to see exactly what this material uh, is going to look like with all the sliders, because, you know, there are a few, um, click on this icon right here, the expose parameters. And let's go ahead and dog this out. 
and there we go. So it's a pretty complex material that has all of these parameters. But my point is that this is something that you are building as your own template. Um, once you export it, then you have the ability to tweak all of those things. So in other words, if I export this material with all of these parameters into a Blender or a 3D Painter, I will be able to change all of those things on the fly without having to go back and tweak anything in, uh, in 3D Sampler. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, you know, I can I can stop the tutorial right now. This is the the main thing. You can just uh, create your um, your material, choose what are the sliders that you want, and click on this icon right here so that you can add them to the exposed values, and then just export it, and that's it. Now, if you wanna uh, take this a little bit further, let's go ahead and continue with the tutorial. But basically, this is the major update is to have these exposed parameters. All right. So after I use the oak wood, I brought in a parquet so you can just click on this add layer type parquet and you'll find this here so if i select that one you will be able to select from a bunch of presets so you can use english clean or english varied or um you know the, the type you can switch from hungarian point to single herringbone right so all of those things and as you can see i have a dot for each one of those things so i will be able to change this later on in other software right um, on top of that i added some scratches just to make it all you know, look a little bit older and stuff like that. Uh, dust, then I added the mod and the mod has this mask uh, because it is a mod material. So let's click on and type on mod. So all I did was just click on this material, drag it on top. And as soon as you drag a, a new material on top of something that already has a material, 3D Sampler is going to automatically uh, create a mask and then you can control the, uh, the blending of that mask. So if you click on the mask, you also have the ability to save these uh, or expose these parameters later on as well. Now, the next one is just a little bit of dirt, um, you know, some extra dust, I guess. Uh, then I have a normal height adjustment. So the only reason I added this one is so that I can also expose the normal intensity. So in some cases, uh, I might want to tweak the intensity of the normals. So let me just show you what that looks like. Um, I want to be able to change, you know, how intense the normal is. Uh, and I can do that from a single slider. So you can do that with the normal and height adjustment. And you can also include the height as well. But, you know, it's usually I just change the normal in this scenario. And then finally, I just added the water. And the water, of course, you can change the level. And all of these uh, extra layers or extra effects, they are added on top based on the type of parquet that you're selecting. So if I change this to uh, go back to English, I think that's the one I had, and tweak the amount in the Y and the X axis, just to create some of, kind of like a wood planks type of thing. Everything on top of that stays the same, right? So, and you know, the dust and things like that, they adjust to the different crevices, which is fantastic. All right, so this is a, a rather complex material, but as you can see, once you break it down into the different elements that make the material is not that complicated, right? Then um, let me just show you something else and then I'll show you how to export it and we'll create another one really quickly. All right, so we have this rust metal material. Again, super simple. There's only four effects, starting with this gold material which you can find as well in here. So type gold. This is the one that I use and I chose this um, option, the gold nugget titanium. Uh, you cannot see the thumbnail, but yeah, the name of this one is nugget titanium. Um, so this is the base and I tweak a few things. Not every single slider. I don't want to expose every single slider because, you know, it would be quite crowded with a lot of uh, options. So I just chose the ones that I think I would need uh, or I would potentially tweak and change later on. Uh, but yeah, this is the base. After that, I added some scratches, right? Just to, again, make it all like the wear and tear of it. Uh, a little bit of dust. And that also variates the, the roughness. But I also expose things like the color of the dust, the roughness. So I can tweak how rough this is, like the, the contrast, basically, the density of the dust. And all of this is going to be um, available to me later on in a different software. Now, um, the final bit is just a rust layer. And all of those things you can just add it from here. So you can just click on here and type rust, click on that, and it will be added. And then you can tweak all of these lighters. So that's uh, how easy it is. So now let's go ahead and before we export this and show you how this looks like in a different software, let's go ahead and create our own material. So this is a, a blank template. I just call it pavement or concrete. Um, and I have another um, texture here that I downloaded from Unsplash and I cropped it to be this um, square format. So let's go back here. All I'm going to do is from my desktop where I have saved that image, drag and drop it either here or on the canvas. It doesn't matter. Let's just drop it there. Um, and I'm going to leave the default settings. So image to material with AA powered. Um, and I'm going to click on add a base material. Okay. 
let's click on import and this is the magic of this software it's going to take a single image as an input and it's going to create a material based on that image with all the the different passes that we need or different maps that we need so it already created it doesn't look great but we will be able to to tweak this quite a bit so if i click on this 2d view you'll see that here we have the albedo uh, or the base color and at the bottom you can switch between that to normal uh, let's get closer here you see we have all the the details of the normal extracted from the image uh, roughness metallic in this case there's no metallic in here the height i mean occlusion and so on and so forth right so this is you know in one single click and drag and drop you get the material and of course there's a lot of tweaking that that you can do right so the first thing i want to do is uh, probably go to the tiling here and i'm going to increase this a bit just so that we can see the seam happening here this one right here right because obviously that image is not tileable and that's kind of like one of the first thing that I want to do. Now, before I do that, I'm going to select the image to material. This is the, the node that converts the image into the material, um, as the name says, and I'm going to tweak a few things. So I'm going to take the micro details. I'm going to reduce that. And that micro detail, you see, is just targeting the very, very small, um, yeah, the very small details. It's very self-explanatory. Sometimes I just feel like I'm repeating myself and being a bit redundant because I'm talking about changing the medium details, which in, in turn changes the medium details, or changing the larger details, which in turn changes the larger details. Um, so you know what I mean? It's a very intuitive software. So all we have to do is just go through these sliders and play around with them. There's no exact science here. Every image that you add is going to be slightly different. Uh, one thing that I will do is um, maybe change the geometry equalizer. You can just push this forward or backwards. So if you set it to something like zero, it's going to flatten everything quite a bit. So I just want to have a bit of variation. Uh, I'm going to remove the ambient occlusion. Otherwise, it becomes like a little bit too dirtier. Um, there's a lot of contrast in here. So I'm just going to reduce that ambient occlusion quite a bit. And the delight intensity is essentially uh, an attempt that the software does to remove the lighting of the image. Sometimes it works or it's good sometimes it's, it's better not to have it in this case you see trying to delight the image actually adds more contrast in here uh, so let's just go ahead and go back there we go um, and the next thing is the roughness so if i expand the roughness here we can go ahead and change the roughness value a bit just to make it more like a concrete like a wet concrete i suppose um, yeah something like that right but in this case yeah we're trying to create a pavement anyway so don't worry about that all right so now that we have this uh, let's go ahead and add another one or another layer Let's click on that and let's click on tile or tiling this one right here so this is the first uh, node that i'm going to use to try to tile this image and if you want to be able to see the tiling a little bit better uh, we just need to enable the second or the 2d view which happens by default and in here i'm going to press the t on my keyboard so the letter t and i can see the the repeating pattern right and i'm going to click on the edge to expand this and i'm going to play with the threshold uh, maybe scale this down a bit, try to reposition this. Um, we can play with the grid resolution, the blurriness and the softness. So again, there's no right or wrong here. It's just a matter of like playing around with these um, sliders and see how we can create a, a more you know, uniform color, I suppose, in this case. All right, so something like this is not perfect, but we have a, a much better representation of the, of the material on the left-hand side. So if you cannot find a... A good tiling option just by moving this square around i'm gonna try to avoid that sort of very dark area there we go this is something this is a little bit better but if you still uh, are struggling to to make this tile right you can force it a little bit more or use a different node which or a different layer called uh, make a tile so let's click on that on top so the first one i'm using is tiling uh, you can keep playing around with tiling and you know in with this type of texture i'm sure it can be um, fixed very fairly easy but i just want to show you another option so with the make it tile it's a different um, arrangement of the texture and then you can play with similar things smoothness contrast and you'll see this works a lot better or at least the combination of the two works a little bit better all right so i'm going to turn off uh, 2d view and we have a, a pretty decent base for this concrete but still a little bit too light maybe um, i want to add a bit more of a of a pattern and make this a little bit darker. So I'm gonna click on another layer. Let's type color, and then we can click on colorize. And this is similar to what I had uh, in the first material that I show you, the, the rough plasticine. And this basically just adds a kind of like an overlay color. So we can take this gray color and go for something a bit darker here. Uh, maybe with a tint of blue, just to make it colder, right? And that's about it. We can also play with the luminosity. So right now, 
the colorize node or the colorize uh, layer is respecting the variation in the luminosity. So the, in other words, the lighter and darker values, but I can just change this and just change the color basically. But I think the luminosity in this case works um, pretty well. All right, so now we have that ready. Now let's go ahead and add an interesting pattern to make it look a lot better. So let's click on a uh, pattern or pavement actually, this one for this case. So I'm gonna click on pavement. And there we go, we have uh, something pretty interesting straight away. And this is just the pattern that uh, it's set by default, but we can change all of that. So let's do that first. I'm gonna open up the pattern and change the type of pattern from European to, or European fam to, uh, let's go for slate. Oh, there's another one, serpentine, brush rock. Okay, this is the one that I like, the brush rock, right? It's a little bit more organic. So that is the pattern that I wanna, that wanna go for. Uh, and then of course we can change things like the spacing, the roundness of the corners, the roundness of the edge. Uh, that's probably a lot easier if I get closer. So you see, it's kind of like adding like a bevel almost. So we can do that as well. Uh, we can also change the, the randomness of the elevation of the different rocks, which is pretty cool. Um, we can also play around with the joint. So if you don't like the color or you know the roughness and all of that, you can go to the joint um, sliders, change the height. Maybe I'm gonna drop this quite a bit, change the width and play around with the variations. Again, this part is like really just a matter of playing around with options. Uh, there's no like a specific settings or a specific value that I can give you. Uh, if you're following along with the exact same image, you might be able to get exact same result that I'm doing here. But this is like, this is the fun part, just like playing around with these values until you get, um, or you tweak it the way that you want it. All right, so that's it in terms of the pattern. Uh, let's do a couple more layers and, and I think we are pretty much there. Let's add a bit of uh, dirt. So let's tap dirt. All right. And I'm gonna use the adaptive surface, but I'm gonna change the dirt location from both to just cavity so that we can accumulate that dirt around the cavities, make this quite rough, and then play around with the quantity and the volume. And also I'm gonna change the contrast a little bit. So it's just adding a layer of dust on top of everything. And if I turn this on and off, yeah, you cannot see the difference as well. All right, and to make things interesting, let's go ahead and click on one more layer, click on water or type water, and then it's gonna be there. All right, and then we can play with the, with the level of the water, right? Uh, the amount or the darkness of the water, how wet the edges are going to be. So it's pretty, um, you know, pretty interesting what you can get with just a few, a few layers. So this is like a wet pavement. Yeah, I think this works fine. All right, so this is the cool part. Once you've done your uh, material, of course, you can spend a lot more time making sure that this looks better. Uh, but once you're happy with this, you can say, all right, these are the different uh, sliders that I need in, a, you know, in the future or in other software to basically uh, tweak. So for example, if I go to colorize, I know that I wanna change the color eventually of the pavement. So all I have to do is click on this thing here. So I will be able to change the color. I'm also going to be able to change or I want to be able to change the luminosity so that not every time is based on the values of the underlying image. There's also cases that I might want a more stylized version, that sort of thing. Um, so that's, that's basically what I want from the color. And as soon as I do that, just with having one uh, exposed parameter, I will have this dot in here. Let's do the same thing with pavement. So I want to be able to maybe change the bricks, um, the spacing, the roundness of the corner, the roughness of the edge, uh, the tilt intensity and the elevation. So quite a few things in here. Plus in the pattern section, I wanna be able to change from this drop down, uh, you know, the type of, you know, let's change it to slate, for example, right? I wanna be able to do all of this uh, later on as well. Um, and obviously depending on which one you choose, there are other parameters, but I'm not gonna go into like too deep in here because every time, you know, if I change to a different one, there's gonna be different parameters. So I will have to enable them all. So I think with this one, it will be, will be just fine. Uh, with the join though, I wanna be able to change the height and the width and potentially the luminosity of it as well, right? So again, lots of different parameters, but are mainly to, to define the pattern of the concrete. Now, in terms of the dirty or like the dirt um, layer, I wanna have the option really to change between cavity to edge to both. So right now, cavity works fine. And obviously the, the roughness of the dirt, the quantity and the volume and potentially the, the spread um, contrast. So you can, you, know, you can enable them all. Just keep in mind that the more parameters or the more sliders that you enable to be exposed later on, it will become um, 
quite complex to just adjust a single material. So I would recommend um, to start with something very simple. And then if you, you really need to uh, maybe add a few more because you can save this project and then uh, you know, export it again. Let's go for water and I'm gonna change the level, darkness, the wetness of the edge as well. And I think that's about it, right? So if I wanna see what this material would look like somewhere else as an SBASR format, I'm gonna click on expose parameters have this here and these are all the options that I will be able to to tweak from um, somewhere else which is amazing right um, and all of these you can you can literally change it from here so you can see what is happening so if I change the color it's going to update in here as well all right, so I'm gonna leave it here and then show you how how to export this and how to use it so there are a few things if you have a 3d painter as well or if you have 3d stager you can just uh, with one click send them to those software so this one right here i'm just going to send it to uh, painter just to show you how easy it is and i have a simple scene that i've set up in 3d painter i already have the the baked um like the mesh maps ready to go so all i have to do is with this selected i'm going to click on this icon to share it and i'm going to select send to substance 3d painter and yep basically 3d sampler is going to do its thing to uh, combine or compile all of this uh, parameters and settings into a single shader that's going to be sent to 3d painter and once this is finished i can just drag and drop it in painter and just use it um, you know change the parameters in there so that's done let's switch to 3d painter and here we have it pavement so i'm going to click on that drop it into this plane and here we have the pavement from 3d sampler and as you can see because i have that selected my pavement layer of material we have all of these parameters here that we've set up in 3D Sampler. So this is fantastic because then we can go ahead and say, you know what, um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna, if I wanna keep the, the water level. So I'm gonna reduce that, right? Or like reduce it or, or get rid of it altogether just by changing this slider, right? And maybe saying, maybe this is too dark, right? So let's go for a lighter pavement. And maybe I don't want these uh, brush rocks anymore. I want something like the flander with. And just by doing that, the, you know, the settings of the material, uh, this is what I think is amazing, right? Like the, the, the whole thing started with just an image, right? We just drag and drop an image. We added a couple of layers and we tweak things uh, here and there. But now we have a template for a concrete or a pattern of concrete, right? And then we can have all of these in here and play around with these things in here. And it's the same material, it's a single layer, right? And this is part of what is exciting, right? That you can, um, combine multiple layers of multiple materials together once you get into Substance 3D Painter, but you have the ability to change um, the material itself in a single layer all within these sliders, which I think is pretty cool. I'm gonna increase the tilt intensity uh, just to make it a bit more random, and then also increase the pavement, the joint uh, width, and add a bit of luminosity as well. All right, so pretty cool stuff. All right, so let me just show you very quickly how that works in a different software that is not uh, 3D Painter, because as you can see, it is very easy. It's just a matter of exporting it to 3D Painter. It would appear immediately in your libraries and you can just drag and drop it into whatever mesh you have. And the alternative is to just export this as SBASR materials. And I have already gone uh, through the process of exporting each one of those. So if I select, let's say uh, the wood material, all I have to do is click on the share icon again and click on export as and select where I want to export this, give this material a name, select the SBSAR. <laughs> I think I've been pronouncing it incorrectly. It's, it's not SBASR, it's ABSAR. Uh, <laughs> so select the format, the correct format, although you also have the SBS as well um, for designer, but the this is the one that you want to go for, the SBSAR format. And obviously you can choose which um, which maps you want to include. So base, color, normal, roughness, metallic, that's you know the usual material for a PBR workflow. Uh, ambient occlusion, and yeah, I think that's it. Unless you have like something else, like maybe a dirt mask, um, opacity. But as long as you have these five, that's, that's the, the basics one. And of course you can set the, you know, the size of the maps. Uh, I've already done that, so I'm just gonna cancel here, but otherwise you can just click on export. And now I'm gonna switch to Blender, which I have exactly the same, the same scene, right? Uh, and this is Blender if, by the way, and there is an official plugin for Substance 3D. So this one right here that I have is pretty simple. You just need to install it in uh, Blender and you can load anything that you want. So I'm gonna click on load 
and let's go ahead and click on the rusty metal or let's do the the wood first let's click on wood click on load substance and let's do the same thing again click load and let's load the rusty metal as well so we have the materials in here and as i click on them you'll notice that i have the parameters exposed in here that's the cool thing about this right and it's an official plugin for blender uh, from from adobe so it should work pretty pretty well um, so what i need to do is just simply select a material so i'm going to select or sorry an object so i'm going to select the plane uh, with the wood selected as my material i'm going to select the uh, 248 as my you know the width and height of my maps and i'm just going to click on apply there we go this is a little bit uh, different from what i was expecting maybe the size of it but let's go ahead and remove the water level altogether and there we go so this is the real magic of the whole process is that um, it is a parametric material and you can just switch and change things on the fly so if i don't want any um the height blend so these three right here i want to remove that sort of bumpiness of the mod it's gonna reduce that quite a bit um you know depending on the size of the map it might just take a a few seconds to to update but it's all done through these sliders right um maybe the color of the fibers maybe go for a lighter tone as well there we go so this is a, a pretty amazing way of um tweaking your scenes with your materials and all of these materials can be done uh, fairly quick with 3d uh, with 3d sampler and they all based on you know you can base them on materials that come with the software or you can do it with textures or photos right so there we go you know, pretty decent result let's go ahead and do the other one just to apply it for uh, one of these meshes i'm going to click on uh, rusty metal let's set this to 2000 by uh, 2048 by 2048 and i'm going to select this maybe the sphere actually and click on apply there we go. I think I'll have to change the uh, the UVs on this one. Uh, but yeah, basically, this is the result. Oh, the UVs are not that bad, right? So that's pretty good. Um, all I had to do is just load the material, and now from Blender using the plugin, um, I can just play around with these lighters, and I have a pretty decent scene. So let's um, let's just turn a few things off so that you can see this in a better way, right? It looks fairly convincing. Obviously, you can spend a lot more time uh, tweaking things. Uh, maybe the darkness of these scratches, or maybe the scratches are too much, right? Now that I look at it. So selecting the plane, bringing the details of the wood. Uh, in theory, we would be able to change the, uh, the scratch amount and the intensity. So I can reduce the intensity a tiny bit and reduce the amount quite a bit. And that, uh, once it updates, again, it might take a little while. It's not straight away. Uh, but you know, once it updates, it's going to change the amount of scratches that there are in the wood planks and if it's taking too long you can just click on this icon just to to refresh it all right so there we go now it looks a little bit more more realistic i mean it's not as damaged as the as the previous version with lots of scratches uh, but that's what i like about this this whole process of setting up a template and then fine-tuning it based on your scene because sometimes um, you know once you're putting your scene together that's when you realize that oh I might need to change the material change the roughness of something or you know the intensity of certain things but doing it this way it just becomes very very easy um, I also think that I might change the the pattern to something else maybe the Hungarian point and again if it takes a little bit longer I just click on this um, refresh the substance 3 material to reload it all right so that's it for this tutorial hopefully you can see how powerful this new update is and and the possibilities that now you have to create your own material and save it for later uh, as a template and then you can tweak it in a different software so i'm going to leave this video here and i'll see you in the next one cheers